Okay, I see we're up on Facebook. We'll go here in just a minute looking for the mayor. We'll be here in a moment. You weren't worried, were you, Chuck? Never. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. All right. Well, I think we can go ahead and uh, get started. So welcome, everybody, to our weekly uh, news conference with the city of Bloomington, Monroe County, uh, Indiana University, and Indiana University Health as we talk about the ongoing efforts uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I am Chuck Carney, Director of Media Relations for Indiana University, and we will take your questions after some opening statements. Let's start off with Bloomington Mayor John Hamilton. Thanks so much, Chuck, and uh, everybody for being here. Um, uh, I, I want to just give a simple message today, which is stay the course. Uh, the continued data that we see counsel us to keep doing what we're doing in our community. We have, um, I'm sure you'll hear more details from Indiana University and from uh, County Health and others uh, about the data details, IU Health. But uh, overall, fifth, fifth week of IU's very detailed reporting um, and continue uh, very good numbers. There's some bouncing up and down in a few areas, but overall, a really good trend. Uh, so staying the course uh, as we do that. Those numbers really are starkly contrasted with the state's numbers, uh, which uh, statewide, as we see very significant rise in the seven day moving average of positive cases. Uh, and even some some degradation, some some bad movement on the seven day moving average of daily deaths uh, has has climbed uh, to really concerning indicators. So the main message locally is to stay the course, keep doing what we're doing and thank everybody for that. I was trying to think of kind of an analogy of a of a thermostat, if you will, like a, a house in a house. We set our thermostat to monitor the temperature, keep the temperature and, and have one dial. What we're doing in a lot of ways is a multi-dimensional thermostat that is trying to manage and control the community's health. And this multi-dimensional thermostat, uh, which, which has dozens of factors from what institutions are doing uh, themselves, from schools and large employers, university, Ivy Tech, et cetera, to the rules that are put in place uh, by governmental bodies, county health and the city to multi-dimensionally control this thermostat to try to manage the health and the mix of what is going on from those controls and regulations and most fundamentally behavior of everyone the mix of all that thermostat dialing has been good for our community we are we are managing health uh, of course there's a loss uh, uh, when we have a death it's it's terrible but but the overall direction of this multi-dimensional thermostat has been good. So stay the course uh, from what the school systems are doing, to university, to regulatory bodies, governments, et cetera. I just want to thank everybody for that. We will continue to monitor, uh, but, but this mix of the thermostat controls and the behavior of the public, wearing your mask, continuing to distance, continuing to avoid super spreader events, the numbers tell us that it is working in this community so far. We're playing averages, we're doing our best. Uh, and I'll just give the example of, um, of Halloween is another little part of that multi-dimensional thermostat of what we're doing. And we, we all really decided to say, let's let the community follow the CDC guidelines. Um, we don't know exactly what all the dimensions of this thermostat, how they all interact and affect. It's a very complicated situation. Penny Cottle, you've reminded us always there's no single number uh, to, to monitor. There's also no single dial uh, to, to adjust. So we use common sense. We're trying to be clear eyed uh, and approach this uh, and just staying the course is the right thing to do. Uh, continue to follow CDC guidelines. 
continue to get your flu shots. I got mine this week, thanks. Uh, and uh, we all need to do that and do the right things. And uh, I know the last thing I'll say, I know the county colleagues which, uh, which run the system will mention, be sure to vote. We have uh, a little more than two weeks uh, left for voting. So please uh, do that and uh, continue to stay the course. Thanks for all that everybody's doing. We'll keep, we'll keep doing our, our jobs as we can from our seats. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's go to Monroe County Health Department Administrator, Penny Cottle. Good afternoon, and I will um, second very a lot of what the mayor just said. So um, if I repeat some of that, please forgive me, but it is all very, very important. As we look at our numbers this week locally, our current positivity rate as of today is 2.2% for the seven day rolling average. But our cases per 100,000 in a seven day period, you know, they were going down and they're kind of inching back up. And so we stayed in yellow this week at, in the, the metrics map for the state. So again, it kind of echoes what the mayor just said, what we've been saying uh, these past many weeks, it's not a time to let up. Uh, we know that it is, uh, been a long haul and we're we're all tired and a little fatigued but it it's not time to let up and we need to continue our current efforts to slow and stop the spread of this virus we can smash it together you've heard me say that before that kind of that new acronym of uh, keeping that six foot uh, social distance to reduce transmission, remembering that masks are important. They're an action that we can take to limit the spread of the virus, avoiding those crowds, especially when we are among people that we don't know what their behavior is. And I'm not gonna say just people that we don't know, but people that we don't know what their behavior is when they're out. Are they wearing masks? Are they socially distancing? Those kinds of things. Um, making sure that um, we are staying home if we are ill. And that means even if I'm asymptomatic and I'm positive, I'm ill and I need to stay home. And we're coming into a season where there are lots of other things going around. So please stay home, take care of yourself if you are ill so that you're not spreading influenza, you're not spreading coronavirus, you're not spreading something else that might be circulating as well. And hand washing. The, the best prevention that we have, uh, it's still a primary prevention practice and strategy that we have and we talk about all the time. So we can smash this virus together, uh, but we do need to maintain our, our course and keep moving forward with the prevention actions that we're taking. Gatherings, regardless of their size, can be a risk. And this goes back to what I was saying before about avoiding crowds. So we need to assess the situation. We need to take precautions, regardless of the size of that crowd that we might be in. So as we begin to enjoy the holidays and fall fun, um, we can do that this year, but we have to do it differently. It will require rethinking our behaviors. And perhaps that um, traditional gathering that you had of 100 people isn't going to work, and you're going to need to uh, pare that down to a much smaller group. I believe that we are a creative group of people and that we can rethink and change up things this year, make them fun, make them enjoyable, but also make them safer. So I would encourage you to think about all of those different events that you might be enjoying in the coming months. So the mayor mentioned Halloween, follow CDC guidelines. There, there are lots of examples out there of things that you can do, ways that you can make things safer. So I encourage you to um, do those things. When we think about sports and winter sports and tailgating, that's another area where we need to be very careful. Um, Maybe you're having a tailgate at home now so that you can watch those games, but keeping that group small, remember that we do have uh, limits and regulations in place locally that are different from the state regulations. So keep those in mind. Uh, within the city limits, there's a 15 person limit on gatherings. So remembering all of those things as you make plans, uh, can you still be outside, um, use single serve food, just make sure that you're distancing and wearing masks. All of those things matter. 
And then um, regarding the testing site, um, the Optum serve site is scheduled through November now, and our new site is coming along. We do not have an opening date yet, but we are moving forward with that and still very happy about the progress that we're making and a big thank you to all the partners involved in that. The last thing that I would echo is, again, it is flu season. It's time to get your flu vaccine if you haven't. Our public health nurses are doing school clinics. They're extremely busy uh, planning these clinics, still working with COVID, still doing other communicable disease follow-up and immunizations. They are extremely busy, and I want to give a real shout out to them. And that is a partnership that we have with Bloomington Health um, how you did it? IU Health Bloomington. Sorry about that. Um, and it's been a longstanding partnership for public health nursing, and we're we're really happy about that. I know that the hospital will have more information on the various flu clinics that are available for the public. Um, so I will let them talk about that, but just say that we want everybody to get their flu vaccine this year. Back to you, Chuck. Okay, let's next go to Monroe County Commissioner's President, Julie Thomas. Hello, Chuck. Thank you again for hosting and thanks to everyone for being here. It's always great to be here on a Friday, especially a sunny one. Um, just a couple of quick notes today. Um, we have uh, had a really robust turnout for early in-person voting. Make a plan to vote. Folks are wearing their face coverings, which is great, um, uh, but you might need a little extra time. So don't, don't think you can just rush in there. There sometimes is a line, but the line moves very quickly. Um, as of yesterday, we have uh, 7,755 voters in person early, uh, and this is at 401 West 7th. Um, also, they've mailed out over 13,000 ballots to folks who requested them, to voters who requested them, and about 7,600 have been returned so far. So if you do have, uh, if you did request a mail-in ballot, um, you really do need to return it. Make sure you get it in the mailbox early, or you can return it to Election Central at 401 West 7th. Uh, you can do that yourself. Um, just so for additional information, uh, indianavoters.com and MonroeCountyVoters.us. Uh, we did, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners did um, set the Halloween trick-or-treat hours as 6 to 8 p.m. Um, on uh, October 31st. Uh, do Please do follow CDC guidance. Uh, there is a great um, web uh, page on our website, co.monroe.in.us, which offers um, uh, that guidance, but also a list of safe places uh, to trick or treat, including uh, a number of our local fire stations, which is a great service that they provide. So please visit that. Um, Ms. Moore may talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, also, um, we um, continue to provide direct uh, CARES funding to uh, any business in Monroe County um, and any social service organization that has COVID related expenses that have not that they did not budget for or not yet been covered by grants or loans. Um, and these are non-payroll expenses. We just increased the cap to $20,000 per uh, business or organization. And as of yesterday, um, we, have, we have granted $167,702 um, to businesses and, and uh, social service organizations. Taxing units have uh, received a total of $36,367. That's additional CARES funding we're providing to any taxing unit in Monroe County. Uh, that has been going mainly to the uh, Monroe County Public Library. Also, um, any resident who is struggling to pay their bills, uh, the uh, Board of Commissioners and Monroe County Council work together to provide a township assistance fund because township uh, trustees are your line of defense. Every County resident lives in a township, so please contact your township trustee if you're ha if you're struggling to pay uh, for housing or utilities, uh, the basic necessities. They will help you. Uh, we received a report on Wednesday that thirty nine thousand um, dollars, approximately thirty nine thousand dollars, has been utilized of that fund so far. Um, and just a reminder: if you early vote or uh, in person or no matter what you're doing in public. 
please do wear your uh, face covering um, and make sure that you are following um, all the guidelines. If we all do this, we can get out of this sooner. Um, otherwise, we're going to continue on this merry-go-round, and that's not uh, and that's not a fun merry-go-round. Uh, but a big thanks to everyone in our community who's doing the right thing um, and thinking about others before themselves. We really appreciate you. Uh, with that, we could take questions um, afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Next, we'll go to Monroe County Emergency Management Director Allison Moore. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for hosting us this Friday, and for all of those. Um, people that are listening in and that chime in every Friday and, and watch their things uh, back on Facebook when they can't catch it in the afternoon. We have so many people in our community that definitely do their part. And um, it does take us all as, as everyone has been. Allison, we're losing your audio. You might, uh, might want to kill your camera and, and just go with audio. Better. There, yeah, that's better. Um, two blood drives scheduled October 22nd from 10 to 3 and October 28th from 2 to 7. Can you hear me still? Yeah, can hear you still. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, and then lastly, I'd like to just chime in uh, in and echo what Commissioner Thomas says. Our fire departments have stepped up and um, ha are willing to hand out candy. Many of our county stations are going to be handing out candy outside um, and they are following CDC guidelines. So check out our county website to see if the fire station that's closest to you um, or you can hop from station to station if you want to have an, a, a fun evening and know that your um, places that you'd be picking up candy with your kiddos would be following the CDC guidelines. That's all I have, Chuck. Thank you so and, much. And before we go away from you, Allison, we heard there are two blood drives. I, I, we may have lost something else you said right before that entirely. The only other thing was I was just echoing what Commissioner Thomas said about the uh, fire stations that will have safe places for um, kiddos to trick or treat. And you can check that website out at co.monroe.in.us. Okay, thanks very Thank much, you, Allison. Chuck. Okay, next let's go to IU Assistant Vice President for Strategic Partnerships and the IUB COVID Response Unit Lead, Kirk White. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks, Chuck and uh, team. Uh, good to be with you again this week. Uh, I think I'll start out with uh, uh, just a recap of our uh, mitigation testing numbers. I think you all saw the uh, dashboard uh, uh, that was posted on, on Wednesday. And it did show that uh, we had a slight uptick, but not in uh, not across the board. So just to review that, in our residence halls, uh, we went from a uh, frankly positive rate of or a, a, a positive move from 1.5 percent uh, positive tests down to 1.1. In the Greek system, it went from 1.6 down to 1.4. Uh, Greek off campus went from 3.5 down to 2.5. The one place we saw a slight uptick was our general off campus population. It went, went from uh, 0.5 up to 0.8. So uh, overall, it's still a relatively good trend. However, uh, what we're seeing is a reflection of uh, what's happening in the rest of the state. Uh, so, uh, what we did notice overall through all of our campuses across the state or, or all of our, our uh, various locations did see a prevalence rate of uh, from went from 0 0.4 to 0 0.9. And so I think that's why uh, the uh, a lot of the attention came to an uptick, but it really reflected more of our other campus locations around the state, which is, as I said, reflective of what's happening in the state which reinforces uh, what the mayor and then Commissioner Thomas and uh, Director Cottle has said is, is that the things that we have done to mitigate the spread, uh, the usual uh, protocols are working in Monroe County and we wanna stay the course. So that is our message. And in the campus, we are committed to doing that. If I switch over to uh, our other big priority here this week and uh, for the coming couple of weeks is to get our entire population at the university uh, with their flu vaccinations. 
up to today, we had have, uh, vaccinated 4,500 of our population. Uh, we're due to vaccinate another 3,000 tomorrow at Assembly Hall. And uh, that uh, effort will continue with special clinics over the next couple of weeks uh, to uh, continue to do these mass uh, immunizations. So we're making good progress there and we'll continue to promote that among our faculty, staff, and students. And finally, a good positive note is that uh, uh, the Hoosiers will kick off our football season on uh, October the 24th at 3.30 p.m. against uh, Penn State. Now, uh, just to remind everybody, there will be no uh, fans in the stands other than uh, limited player families and coaches families, and we will not be allowing any uh, uh, tailgating in the neighborhood. However, we're working closely with our students and alumni and others on safe home gating. Home gating. So in the coming week, uh, we'll be publishing uh, some various ideas, some uh, innovative things you can do to celebrate the uh, kickoff of the season, have some sense of normalty, normalcy with uh, home gating and uh, following the Hoosiers that way. And that's our report for this week. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, let's next go to IU Health and Brian Shockney. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We continue to see a positive increase in patients and inpatients. Uh, I'm sharing two slides today. We are a region, and while uh, we've heard that Monroe County is doing an excellent job, we have counties around us that affect the resources of our health system and our small hospitals around us can only manage so many patients and then those patients have to come to our regional facility here and that causes a strain on our health services. This chart you're seeing is a new chart that I'm showing I haven't shown before and this is the regional uh, inpatient chart. Um, uh, we are seeing in uh, Orange County, Lawrence County and Morgan County increases uh, of positivity. On the state health website, uh, Lawrence County has gone in the last seven days from a 7.5 positivity rate to 18.4. Orange has gone from 10.5 to 25% positivity with uh, additional deaths. So we are uh, asking that uh, we, we've been dil diligent in those communities, but uh, knowing that this is a, a resource, it's a regional resource and it does affect us uh, as a region. The next slide uh, shows Monroe County and that, that uh, uh, that positivity rate and inpatient rate has stayed, uh, has increased and is increasing uh, over the past seven days. So it's just important for us uh, to be sure we're being diligent, um, not only in uh, following all the practices, but uh, personal wellness, reflection, and peace during this pandemic as a uh, uh, flu season is upon us. And uh, I just want to say that I'm proud of Monroe County. I was able to participate in the uh, Arts uh, Federation, the uh, pumpkin Glass Pumpkin Festival, which was very well done, very safe, um, and is a good example of how communities can continue to celebrate, continue to uh, focus on uh, good things that can happen, but do them in a very safe and planned way. And so we ask that we continue to do that and partner with your health department and others to do so. Um, as shared last week, we're proud to be able to offer an IU Health owned building as the Monroe County uh, testing site, uh, South Morton Avenue, um, together with uh, our partners here on the screen. And that's going to help us uh, tremendously in our community as well. And then the uh, Monroe County Public Health Clinic and Collaborative between IU Health and Bloomington Hospital and Monroe County Health Department has started offering flu vaccines to all ages. Uh, limited high dose flu vaccines will also be offered um, and they're on your screen there, those times and the locations around the region. Um, so we have actually vaccinated 14,000 individuals in the last two weeks and have 50,000 uh, out of the 50,000 doses. So we will com complete uh, over uh, just over a month's period, 50,000 vaccinations in the region, including all of our team members. So uh, thank you for getting you in advance. If you've not gotten your flu shot uh, to get that, 
because this is our first time ever in a pandemic uh, in my lifetime and many others that we've also had the seasonal flu that will come. And then I just want to say thank you again for the protection of yourselves and others over the past eight months uh, and continue to be diligent uh, as we cannot stress our health resources uh, to a point where uh, we cannot uh, provide the care that we that our patients deserve. Um, so please be diligent and make sure you're doing all the things uh, that uh, Provost Rebell in her communication said this week. I, I was very encouraged with her uh, four points. Flu shots, avoid gatherings that put us at risk, avoid travel outside of our region, and avoid contact with close individuals, whether inside or outside. Uh, so we just appreciate her support and her communication to our region. And that's my remarks. Okay, and we'll be happy to take some uh, media questions here uh, in uh, just a moment. Uh, I want to start off with one quick one that did come in on Facebook, uh, and we'll uh, send this to Penny and also to the mayor, uh, asking about why not go ahead and move to stage five with the mask mandate the same, saying many businesses are suffering by limiting customers being served. If I understand the, the question correctly, we're really talking about uh, capacity. And in reality, moving to stage five, capacity did not change. Um, prior to, to that, the state gave percentages, but always that has required six foot distancing between patrons within that facility which means that if you are following that six foot distance, you are automatically reducing your capacity. And so when the governor in stage five took out the percentage, it is still very clear we have to have that six foot uh, distance between all patrons. So the capacity was just sort of a, an unnecessary limit and, um, so we are we are in step with that. It you have to have your patrons six feet apart, and if you do that, then um, the capa the percentage of capacity is irrelevant. Yeah, I I just add reminding and and county health sets most all of these numbers that the uh, you know we're we are not changing, uh, and we're continuing what we've had for quite a number of weeks. Uh, which seem to be importantly working uh, again, you know, establishments like bars and restaurants have the, as long as they have the tables separated and it's only table, table only service, uh, that's, that's the same as it has been. And we're also holding our, our gathering size limits for, for uh, either publicly available spaces or private spaces at that complicated, somewhat complicated 15 in the city 50 outside the city for private gatherings, and then 100 and 150 for indoor and outdoor uh, public, publicly available gatherings, unless they get permission. And that hasn't changed. And, and I, don't, I don't expect, of course, the county health department sets most of that. I don't expect it will change in the short run because we keep seeing, again, this complicated thermostat is helping us get through. Um, yeah, I, I would just add to that, yes, that you know we need to really see strong, steady declines before we really make changes. I, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you want to add, uh, there's been some developments uh, with uh, uh, collaborations among cities uh, that are part of the Big Ten and also uh, more developments with Kirkwood Avenue and what you're doing there. Yes, thank you, Chuck. I, I didn't want to burden with too much as we focus on the health and the and the and the well-being data and such which uh, again for example from brian chockney thank you reminding us that even if things are going well here there can be real implications here uh as the state and our region changes but just a couple quick updates on that we actually had a meeting today with big big 10 cities uh, so cities that host big 10 universities um, uh, to participate, how are things going, thinking about that. And I just wanted to report uh, for, I, I was not on that call, but my colleagues were uh, that, that IU and Bloomington were really leading in many ways on testing, on contact tracing, and, and on enforcement uh, among those cities. And uh, just a shout out and thanks to Indiana University and the terrific collaboration with the city uh, on that and the extensive commitment of the university. And we continue to 
benefit from and, and value that, that close collaboration. And a, a second uh, announcement, really, I think the press release, I don't think it's out quite yet, but it's coming to say again on a collaboration, the Kirkwood project where we've closed some blocks of Kirkwood. We've now, we'll be announcing this afternoon, the plans to close uh, three blocks of Kirkwood Avenue, really close them to uh, motorized traffic uh, through the end of the year as a pilot project uh, that could change, but the plans are to close them through the end of the year. That's the blocks uh, between Indiana and Dunn, the, b the block between Dunn and Grant, and then the block between Washington and Walnut uh, to close those to allow the merchants, and we've been working very closely with the Merchants Association, to close those to allow them to continue to use outdoor space uh, through the end of the year, and that lets them invest in a little more infrastructure on that. So I wanted to let people know that's happening. And one really important IU collaboration on that, thanks again, is that IU has agreed to, um, to change uh, the treatment of four parking areas uh, in the vicinity, three surface lots uh, near the law school and, and, and the two lots between Kirkwood and Sixth and Indiana and Dunn, and then actually the, um, the um, uh, 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 Poplar's Garage to make those available free after 5 p.m. Uh, to allow free parking to the public. Uh, since some of the parking uh, is changed with those Kirkwood closures, we really appreciate that from IU, uh, allowing free parking, uh, not overnight, but through the evening uh, hours uh, for those who want to use uh, the downtown. We encourage people to use uh, downtown safely. Uh, we, we, we appreciate the collaboration we continue to have 50 spots available, parking drop off, uh, quick 15 minute spots. So anyway, piloting these things, it's been popular. It's been, it seems to be safe and a way for these institutions to, uh, to keep going through the, through the challenge. And so we appreciate all the collaboration that makes that possible. Thanks. Okay. Question from the B-Square Beacon for Brian Shockney. How do these hospital inpatient numbers stack up against the peak of April and May? And are we now the highest census numbers that we've seen today? So we are not at our highest census, but uh, Bedford Hospital is at its same level of inpatient as it was during the peak. Um, but how do they stack up? As you can see on this graph, um, it is about 70% capacity of, of COVID positive patients as we had before, 70% of the number we had in our original surge. So it is concerning. Okay. Uh, so next question uh, for, uh, sorry, finding my place, for IU, uh, will there be any special COVID-19 protocols in place for the individual time trials for Little 500 this Saturday for fans and for riders? Kirk, can you speak to that? Well, I, I don't have details on that particular event, but uh, I can, can let you know that uh, we have an approval process for any uh, gathering on the campus. It, it, it goes through several levels of approvals and various uh, departments uh, review the plan and make sure that uh, any type of gathering is, is uh, following the campus protocols that we we have in place for distancing, mask wearing, uh, and and uh, uh, food distribution and that sort of thing. So, although I don't know about this one particularly, I can tell you that it would have had to have gone through those approvals. So uh, I'll I'll follow up to make sure, but uh, that's where we are on anything that happens in the campus boundary right now before it's approved for uh, for it's happening. From uh, Ethan Burks, WFIU, WTIU for Julie Thomas. Could you talk a little bit more about the Township Assistance Program? You said thir about 39,000 has been distributed so far. How much money is available in that fund and how can people utilize the service? And do you have a rough estimate of how many citizens have used it to this point? And I can repeat some of those in a moment after that stream. That's all right. Thank you so much. Great question. Um, I don't have a um, number of households to offer. I don't have that report in front of me. Uh, so I apologize for that. But um, the uh, we do have um, the the 
County Council and the Board of Commissioners work together and to develop this program, we set aside $100,000 in CARES funding. So there's still some uh, room uh, and we're willing to reconsider and add additional funds if necessary. Our concern uh, that was mentioned by Washington Township Trustee uh, Ms. Uli is that um, CARES funding ends at the end of the year. So we're going to have to think about how we can help uh, folks dealing with, dealing with things like heating bills as we get into winter. Um, but uh, we are we are, encourage uh, residents because this is just one funding source that supports what the township trustees do. So we encourage residents to contact their township trustee uh, because there are other resources available as well uh, that they can direct them to. Uh, just don't wait. Um, uh, try to make that connection with your township trustee early uh, so that they can provide assistance for you in a timely manner. We're trying to avoid evictions and utility disconnections uh, in this community. Uh, most of the, I can tell you that most of the uh, requests came from uh, Bloomington Township and Perry Township but we're seeing some additional requests now coming in uh, from Van Buren and from Richland, um, although the numbers are not nearly as high. So um, I can uh, get that uh, specific information for you and send it along to you via email later. Thanks. Okay. Uh, follow up from B Square Beacon for Mayor Hamilton regarding the Kirkwood Avenue closures. When you say it'll be closed through the end of the year, you mean continuously every day through the week, not just every weekend through the end of the year, correct? That is correct. Those three blocks, the plan uh, with this pilot is to close them to motor motorized traffic every day, 24 seven uh, between now and the end of the year. Um, as just a reminder, and I see there's a question too about people with disabilities, and maybe I can talk about it at the same time. Uh, the all the north south streets will remain, uh, and and all the alley access uh, will remain uh, because it is important to try to make sure uh, uh, both emergency vehicles and uh, people with disabilities that have access to that. Uh, and the merchants I know are very sensitive to that. Of course, Kirkwood's been redone to make sure all the curb cuts and, and ramps and such are there. If there are any problems uh, with anybody, either from a from a retailer, an institution, or an individual, please reach out uh, to to my office uh, or, or to the downtown merchants, uh, and we'll we'll certainly try to figure out if there's anything else we can be doing. But that basic infrastructure of the of the um, uh, alleyway access, as well as uh, of course the sidewalks and the north south streets, will will remain open. Thanks. Okay. Uh, question uh, directed, uh, this is from Facebook. I'll direct this towards Penny. Uh, can salons have more than one customer per operator if they remain six feet apart and are sanitized between customers? Yeah, I did see that in uh, come up and I pulled up the order. So I was looking for that. At this point, we've changed things. The governor's orders changed so many times. I hate to respond without um, actually looking at the orders. I would say go to the state health department or the governor's um, the Indiana state governor's page with his executive orders. And the back to back on track guide really lists some of those personal service things out and you should be able to see it. But in the meantime, I wasn't able to pull it up and find it exactly. So I don't, I hesitate to tell you something and tell you wrong, but you should be able to find it if you go to that back on track and I will keep looking for it. And if I can find it before we're done, then I will chime back in. Yep, just let us know if you do find that. Uh, I am waiting for more questions, happy to take more. We've still got time as we are waiting. Uh, we'll emphasize a couple of things that were put here in the chat from Julie Thomas about voting information, MonroeCountyVoters.us and IndianaVoters.com. If you have any questions about the early voting that is going on right now or election day itself. Uh, and then Allison Moore mentioned the blood drives coming up. Those dates again are October 22nd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and the 28th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. So uh, again, waiting for more questions. If you have them, I will uh, do my song and dance here as we uh, wait for, not literally, but uh, as we wait for another question, usually 
uh, you guys come up with another one, so I'll be happy to take one. Um, and uh, Allison, that uh, location again for the blood drive? The Monroe County Convention Center. And you can register at redcross.org. Okay. Uh, and I'll just take this moment to mention that if you have questions from the IU end about the flu shots uh, and other things, of course, fall 20 IU uh, website, fall2020.iu.edu has all of that information. It is also very easy if you're an IU employee to submit your attestation that you have received your flu shot and do that there. Kirk, while we have a minute, um, it is related to healthcare, but it is National Mammogram Day. This October is Pink Day. I have a sister and a grandmother who both uh, lost their battle with breast cancer. And so I just want to remind all women to make sure they get that mammogram, uh, make sure they reach out and uh, do all the things that uh, they do need to do. And uh, so we have support systems in place for all of our uh, people who are battling or have won the battle. And we just want to make sure that we bring that to the attention of our community. It is something we're making inroads on, but uh, we all have uh, no, no people who have suffered through this disease or they have won their battle, uh, some who have lost it. And just want to make that heightened awareness for everyone on this day uh, and for this month as well. Penny? Yes. Okay. Back on track. And I'm just going to read this personal services. That would be salons may resume normal operations with face coverings and social distancing being required. Okay. All right. And Leslie Snyder from IU health reminds us it's happy bosses day and to all of the community leaders and thanks for the leadership during the pandemic. Uh, Mayor Hamilton. Uh, I'm not doing a song and dance either, but I just want to, first of all, thank, Thank Brian for reminding us uh, about IU Health and the fact that we are not an island. Uh, we, we can do things right here. Uh, the whole mix of all that we're doing, we don't know each piece of it, what 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 they all, but but something is working well so far. Uh, again, it could turn on a dime, but but we can really get implicated, and I know the health system can. Uh, the hospital can be c caring for people from around. It also reminds us that traveling, uh, which was mentioned, traveling from Monroe County to other places, not very far away, can have very different uh, viral uh, exposure and, and experience right now. Um, we care about that for students. We care about that for, you know, if you're going to visit leaves or visit friends or family, it's, it's just a reminder that what we've been doing here with, with the you know, really good masking uh, in so many people uh, and, and all the people on this call have continued to encourage that, that the state is going the wrong direction right now overall. And um, the data are really concerning. So we have to remember we're part of that uh, and continue to depoliticize, just remind people that all this stuff is important to protect our, our family, our friends, our neighbors, um, and um, uh, continue to communicate that message to our leadership uh, around the state as well, how important it is. So. I just want to thank again everybody who's collaborated now seven months uh, into this, uh, and and we keep we keep tweaking all those dials, uh, and we don't. It is not what somebody it may not be rocket science, but it is science. I mean, we're we're following the data and trying to do that. And I just want to thank everybody, and we'll keep keep doing our best. It involves a thermostat too, as well. <laughs> hey, Chuck, I. Uh... I just might add one more comment. One little trend that we've seen this past week is that some people uh, are hesitating when they feel like they may be symptomatic. They're hesitating actually getting checked out. And the best way to do it is go to the IU Health uh, virtual uh, app site is an easy one. Uh, but any of the online IU Health assets uh, Check your check in if you're starting to feel symptoms. Check yourself in to, to one of those places. Talk with a professional and see whether you may have COVID. If you do have those symptoms, we need to we need to grab it fast so that we can control the spread. Don't wait until your next mitigation test or whatever. Uh, let's let's nip this as soon as we can. 
And Kirk, uh, we were talking about travel and it occurred to me just now, it might be worth mentioning, there is still some detail to be determined, but we'll be offering departure testing for people leaving Bloomington uh, prior to going away. And then of course, students uh, will be getting on arrival testing again when they come back. That is correct. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, uh, you get a, a test available if you'd like one before you leave uh, the campus in a week uh, before Thanksgiving. Uh, so if you're concerned either about uh, your own status so that you can protect your family, but you may need one if you're entering another state or uh, need to fly, you may need uh, certification that you've had a test within the last couple of days. And our, our mitigation testing will allow that. You'll get an email back that you can show uh, any authorities that you've been tested within the last couple of days. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that is our time. And in seeing no other questions, we'll wrap it up for this week. We will return again next week at our same time, 1.15 on Friday. Thanks for the questions. And thanks for everybody for being here. Thank you. Thank you as always, Kurt. Good weekend. Thanks, Chuck.